So let's start with the parts of the nephron. If you have this model, make sure that all of the parts of your nephron are labeled. Uh, origami organelles labeled some parts, but not all of them. So I've added some labels. Let's start with the blood vessels. Coming into the kidney, we have a renal artery that's bringing blood from the heart that needs to be cleaned. It's full of oxygen, but needs to be cleaned. And that branches into millions of tiny, tiny arteries called arterioles, tiny branches. So we start with the afferent arteriole. It's called afferent because it's coming into the glomerulus. And then we have this tangle of blood vessels called the glomerulus, which literally comes from the etymology is a tangle of thread. This is the site of filtration. Leaving the glomerulus, we have the efferent arteriole because efferent means it's going away from something. It's still an arteriole. And then all of that goes into these teeny tiny capillary blood vessels. And capillaries are where things can move in and out of the blood really well. So this is the blood part. Eventually, once it goes out through the capillaries, the blood is then going to go into venules, which become the renal vein, and that leaves the kidney to go back to the heart. Now this part that's three-dimensional is called the tubule. So we have this tube system where the filtrate gets collected. The tubule begins with Bowman's capsule. So the glomerulus is sitting in Bowman's capsule. And then the filtrate passes to the proximal tubule. If you remember our regional terms, proximal means near. So it's near the glomerulus and Bowman's capsule. Then we go down this thing called the loop of Henle. And we have the descending loop of Henle and the ascending loop of Henle. Descending means it's going down and ascending means it's coming up. Part that I included a label for is the distal tubule. So we have the proximal tubule, which is closer to the glomerulus, and we have the distal tubule, which is farther away. And then finally, we have the collecting duct. I've now zoomed in on what's called the zone of filtration. So the zone of filtration is where all the filtering occurs. Let's revisit our kidney. The zone of filtration is in the cortex. So everything I'm gonna talk about right now happens in the cortex. I'm gonna start with the things that do not get filtered out. They're in the blood and they should pass right through here. They should stay in the glomerulus and continue to the efferent arteriole. These didn't come with my model, but I added them because I just like my students to know that these things should not ever be passing into the filtrate. They are protein and red blood cells. Both of those don't pass through the filter into Bowman's capsule. If they do, it means you have significant problems. Okay, what we see here is urea, and urea is also known as cellular waste. Now we have a lot of water. We do not filter out every single bit of water, so some amount of water comes through, goes into the filtrate, Okay, now I've added the sodium ions, also referred to as electrolytes or salts. Those are going to pass into Bowman's capsule. So they go through the filter. Next up is glucose. There was one in my model and I just threw in another one. So we have a couple of glucose molecules and those also pass through the filter. And finally, I decided to add one more thing, which is medication, because many of us take medications, and I thought it's kind of interesting what happens with the medicine. So medicine does pass through the glomerulus into Bowman's capsule, and now our filtration is done. Before we move on to reabsorption, I just want to focus on all the um, water molecules and the proteins and the blood vessels that did not go through filtration. So they pass through the capillary beds and then they're going to go right out through this tiny, tiny vein, make their way to the renal vein and make their way back to the heart. Let's move from the zone of filtration, which was the glomerulus and Bowman's capsule, and let's now go to the zone of reabsorption. Reabsorption is going to happen here in the medulla, in the medullary pyramids or the renal pyramids. So out here in the cortex, we did lots of filtering, took a whole lot of stuff out of the blood. Now some of it is going to get reabsorbed back in in the medulla. 
I have removed some of the molecules to make this less complicated. So we're going to start at the beginning of our reabsorption area, which is this convoluted tube, the proximal convoluted tube. And you can see we have some urea here, some glucose, some water, some sodium. For now, that's what we're going to focus on. What happens right here is in the proximal tubule, the sodium, a little bit of this, is going to be transported out into what's called the interstitial fluid around the, um, around the tubule, and it's going to come out with some water. So some sodium and some glucose is going to make its way out of the filtrate. It's going to find its way back into the bloodstream, and then it'll go back through the renal vein to the heart. So this is now reabsorbed back into the blood. Now we're in the loop of Henle, so we have the descending and the ascending. And in the ascending loop of Henle, we're going to have lots of sodium that's going to be reabsorbed from that ascending loop of Henle. The ascending loop of Henle is actually impermeable to water, but in the descending loop, the water can pass through. We're going to have some water pass from the descending loop into those capillaries through osmosis and join the sodium. No water can pass through the ascending loop of Henle, but once we get to the collecting duct, it's again permeable to water. So some of the water is going to be pulled out of the collecting duct back into the blood. Even though the urea is a waste product, some of the urea is actually reabsorbed. Before we move to the zone of secretion, let's look at what is in the blood currently. So the red blood cells and the proteins never left. Some of the water never left. Some of the water was reabsorbed. All of the glucose was reabsorbed, and lots of the sodium was reabsorbed, and a little bit of the urea, and this is what's currently in the blood. So now let's look at the zone of secretion. The zone of secretion is at the end of the collecting duct as the final things that are going to become urine are moving toward the renal pelvis. All of these items that are left in the filtrate, in the tubules, it's been more and more concentrated as a lot of water moves out, and some of the other materials have moved out too. You've seen things like the glucose and some of the salts, a little bit of the urea. And now let's look at what happens to the rest of this. It's just continuing. It was in the descending loop. We're continuing to the ascending loop and the collecting duct. And here it's made its way to the end of the collecting duct. One thing I'm going to throw in there that I talked about earlier is medication. Our medications do get filtered out, and um, they end up going through the tubules and coming out as urine. This is why if you have a headache, you have to keep taking medicine, because our kidneys filter it out. It's also why if we take too much medication, over time it really damages our kidneys. So these are all of the products that are going to end up in our urine from the collecting duct. They're going to go into the renal pelvis, down the ureter, get to the bladder. Eventually, our bladder gets full of all these items, and here comes our urine. And there we have it. At the end, all this stuff that never came out of the blood or got reabsorbed back into the blood goes back through the renal vein, back to the heart, and the whole thing begins again. And then all the items that got filtered and then secreted come out through the bladder and the urethra and we pee.